I had a meeting earlier today. It was an eligibility meeting for a young girl that has autism, ADHD, uh, you know, some language deficits, high IQ, um, processing speed issues. I mean, severely disparate from what her other scores are with regards to her intelligent uh, tests. But at the same time, um, you know, the behavior is there all combined with, you know, natural executive functioning deficit, which hasn't developed, uh, you know, frustration with regards to the processing speed issue colliding with uh, her strengths in academics and in other areas, social areas, and in language. She has a very strong sense of language, which, you know, is not un necessarily uncommon for a high-functioning autistic girl. Uh, they tend to sort of be outliers when it comes to some of the natural uh, aspects that the, that are that we typically see as deficits in in boys. Okay, now in this particular situation, we're trying to get her an IEP for the first time. I don't, you know, I I sort of figured it wasn't going to be uh, that big of a deal, and it wasn't. I looked at the eligibility report before the meeting even started, and I could see that she was going to qualify. Now, during the evaluation, they had asked the pragmatic or the social communication piece be done by an outside speech language pathologist, and this professional provided their uh, insight and their report, and there was a lot of behaviors in trying to, to get her to score on the assessments that she was responsible for, for giving. Um, now, of course, during the course of the evaluation, you, as any good examiner would do, would sit there and explain that, uh, you know, these scores are reliable, but the child did engage in behaviors or refusals, uh, was frustrated, was tired, whatever. It's very important to have that information explained as well, because at that point, you know, the team needs to understand that uh, in order for that examiner to sit there and say, these are reliable results, or these are the scores these were some of the contributing factors that make aspects of it unreliable. Uh, I think that she probably is higher performing, those kind of things. So if you're ever sitting in a meeting and they, they say those kind of things, that is why. Uh, behavior, the, the temperature in the room, the child's, uh, you know, whether the child's sleepy, all of those things are contributing factors as to whether or not these scores are reliable. Now, in this particular situation, there was a summary uh, of, of all of the scores. And it, within that summary report, it was probably about five sentences long. It wasn't a long paragraph, but at the same time, very selective in using the word examiner once. Okay, the child uh, responded well to the examiner. The rest of the descriptions inserted the word authority. The child would not respond to authority, 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 authority. Used examiner once. Now, I found that strange. So, of course, I posed the question, did you write the summary or did the school personnel take your information and write the summary on your behalf? Now, she said, I wrote the summary. So, I'm like, okay. It's not uncommon for me to see school personnel using the word authority. I see it frequently. Don't agree with it. I'll explain why. All right. I think it uh, sends a bad message. I think that it's not appropriate. Um, you want to use the word educator. You want to use the word teacher. Fine. But I think in our society, uh, well, let me, let me, I digress. So I asked her, I posed that question. I said, why did you choose examiner here? But the rest of the time, you explain your interactions with this child, putting yourself as an authority. And she just said, well, I mean, I, I guess I didn't think about it. I mean, I was the one uh, asking the questions, and so therefore she's the child. Because we would not do that if, let's say, there was somebody that we were assessing of equal or parity with regards to age. We would not say, I'm the authority on somebody like that. So it, it sends this message of this imbalance, okay? When in reality, uh, in this particular relationship, it is true that she's an examiner. This is the person being examined. And authority denotes something slightly different. And it just struck me as odd. She, of course, was very inquisitive 
why does that matter? And I said, it matters a lot. Because what it does is, I, and I understand in our society, guys, especially over the last 15, 20 years, uh, it really escalated over the past few years. Uh, but I've, I've noticed that language just doesn't hold the importance that it should. Uh, meaning words, meaning how we're using these words, where we're choosing to insert words. And it's very, you know, it, it, of course, when you live in a society to where people can't now, you know, now we can't agree on what a gender is. We can't agree on the definition of a woman. Uh, these kind of things convolute language to where we're not able to have a conversation with each other because there's not a uniformity on agreement of what the definition of those words are. And as a lawyer, I have to understand the definition of these words. It is paramount that I understand the definition of these words. It's paramount that I understand why you're choosing that word. Because choosing this word as opposed to choosing this word makes a huge difference. It sends a mental message. And so when I'm looking at a speech language pathologist that's an independent, not employed with the school system, was contracted to do this particular evaluation, why she chose the word authority over examiner was very important to me because it, it, the, 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 the word authority was connected with the child's re behavior refusals. And I felt like that was... Uh, you know, and of course, in further questioning, what I ended up finding out is this person frequently contracts with the district. It wasn't our independent education evaluation request. Uh, it was just somebody who they contracted out to do this specific assessment, which means the parent's still in the position to request an independent education evaluation. I don't see there's a point. But it did help sort of open up my understanding of what our ongoing problem is on resolving this particular set of issues because the mindset within this particular school system is that of we are authority you're the child you listen to us you're the child you will obey us you're the child and guys when you have a child that has let's say intermittent explosive disorder because they have a, a dysregulated uh, mind that hasn't developed or immature uh, there's major deficits in social emotional development to where she may be seven, uh, but with regards to these social emotional areas, she's nowhere near that. All right. But yet she has a strong sense of language and a strong use of language. Uh, and the other thing is, is that academically, she's really performing at a mid-year first grade level, even though she's in kindergarten. All of these are contributing factors, which requires patience. It requires understanding. It requires teachers. Not authorities, not authority, okay? And I think we need to understand how we're using language and how we're describing ourselves and how we're describing those that work with our children. Our children need teachers. Our children need examples. Our children need educators. Our children need professionals. Our children need people that are empathetic, sympathize, caring, loving. You notice I never use the word authority. Authority in our society does not denote those things. We don't think of authority and think of compassion, sympathy, empathy, love, patience. That isn't the job of authority, is it? Authority is something you obey. Authority denotes compliance. And I'm seeing too much of that in our society today. I'm seeing it escalated with regards to, it, to its use in, in school reports, in, in school discussions, in disciplinary reports. I find it uh, a, a frequent use uh, when it comes to our interactions with each other. And guys, it doesn't have a place. Your educators, your teachers, okay? This whole authority nonsense, to where you know it's about compliance. Think about how we're using these words. Think about and and be very selective, guys. And I'm talking to, to parents. When you're seeing these words as descriptors for you know who's interacting with your child, 
please, please have that let off some red flags. Ask follow-up questions. Why did you choose this word over this word? Ask those questions. And I don't think that it's purposeful, guys. I think that, that we've been so conditioned in our current society that, that we've, and especially post-COVID, because everything was about authority there. You will do what we say. You will comply. We will mandate. We have that power over you. And it did a lot of damage to our individual selves, our individual rights. You know, I, I, screw the collective, guys. I, I don't understand this whole obsession with the collective. I'm able to protect the rights of your children because of individualism, because of individual rights, not because of some collective right. All right? The collective rights, guys, is actually what is damaging to our most vulnerable in our society because a collective denotes a majority, and a majority isn't right. A majority can be right sometimes, but even within whatever well-intentioned majority opinion and collective decision, there's always going to be those that are disenfranchised and those that are not considered. And so those of you that have adopted more of a collective mindset, you need to check yourself, all right? Because I can't protect your child under a collective mindset. I, I protect your child under an idea and under a theory of individualism because that's what all of our rights are under, including an I. P, an individualized education plan. It's not a collective education plan. Though I'm starting to see authority try to treat everything as some uniform collective broad brush approach. You know, everything's small group instruction. Everything is, is uh, uh, some, you know, crafted, you know, life skills class that uh, meets whose purpose? Well, the administrative convenience of the governmental system. It's not truly individualized, and our, our children aren't truly individually considered. Language is important. It is so immensely critical. So we need to stop looking at it as though it's just sort of, oh, well, that's just the word. These words have meaning. These words have definition. They're inserted in places. And whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, these words have power. And using the word authority when it should be examiner has power. I'm not saying that the person that inserted it even thought about it. I don't think she did. But at the same time, it was very telling how she looks at herself. Very telling to me. Very telling to me how school people describe themselves. Very telling how parents describe themselves. And it has no place, guys. These are children, vulnerable children. They need patience. They need love. They need examples. They need teachers. They need care. They don't need authority. Aren't you tired of it? Aren't you tired of people telling you what to do and kicking you in the backside all the time? either with a handout or a threat through a fist? Aren't you tired of it? I am. So stop emula emulating that. We start emulating that. We start emulating what we would like to see. We start correcting things and asking for words to be changed. People will follow. 